was asked to do a video on setting gains last night, and I thought I'd do a proper video here. So I'll show you how to set gains, crossovers, all that, just, well, pretty much setting an amp. Um, now, I'm not an expert, I don't have a O-scope, I don't have a DD-1. Um, this is purely setting gains with a screwdriver and by ear. Start with the Colossus, and um, I'm not going to do any music here or actually set the gains, I'm just going to show you how to do it, okay? So, and what they mean, that's my main thing. So here we have a low pass filter. So a low pass filter cuts off the frequencies below this point. So it's 35 to 250, so we think here, okay, is obviously going to be between these. So it's going to be like 130 um, hertz up here. So I've turned it down to where I think it's probably around 90 hertz, okay? That's where anything below 90 hertz, my subs don't even pick up. Now the subsonic, on the other hand, is an added one that most amps, or a lot of amps, won't have. And so the thing is, if you go, I want everything below 90, that means the amp will play 5 hertz, 10 hertz, and stuff like that, which you can't hear, and it's just going to damage your subs, you know, probably. So what I can do here is cut off those really, really low ones. So I've set this probably around 18, 20 hertz. So anything that really, really low, it just doesn't even play them. Then over here, again, these two things most amps won't have. Now I can choose a frequency where I want it to kind of boost just slightly. So all I've chose is about it's about 35 hertz. Okay, 35, 36 hertz, or something like that. And I've, you know, boosted it by maybe one, two decibels. Uh, you know what I mean, compared to the rest of it. And that's the other thing. This thing will create the boost. Most amps will have a bass boost. That'll just create um, clipping. And, I mean, you know, distortion if you go too far. So right there, it's probably fine. It's only a quarter, but any if you go much higher, it's gonna probably cause problems. Um, and then this is another thing most amps won't have a bandwidth, which means I can choose how wide I want it to be from this frequency. So it'll kind of what it'll look like on a chart. It'd peak and then it'd come down. So you like have these your two dB bit boost, and then it you know comes down each side. So I have went about a quarter, maybe just over. As far as the phase goes, I never use the phase to be honest. I just leave it on zero. I have played with it, and I always find it sounds better. Well, it sounds bloody all the same, so I just leave it on zero. Uh, then we got the level, which is your gain. Now your gain, you can set to the pre-volt of the head unit, which is kind of what I've done here. Mine's a 4.5 volt head unit, so I've set it around 4, 4.5, which is a dead middle. Okay, it's just a little over. Um, or you can set it to ear, well, and it also sounded pretty good. So that's why I've set it here, because to me this is where it sounded about the best. Um, and this is also kind of kind of matches it with the head unit's pre-volt. Now we come over to a four-channel amp. Now over here we have a low-pass filter again, which means uh, if you set it on that, because there's a four-channel, you set it on low-pass, it's only going to play like really low, you know, sub frequencies and stuff. All-pass means it's going to play everything. Okay, that's what all pass is for. It's just going to play everything. And then we've got high pass, which means it does the opposite of over here. And instead of cutting off the high frequencies, this thing cuts off the lows. Now, on this amp, you can set that to 50 at the lowest. Now, I've got it set to around 60, 65. So I, my speakers, the mid-range, don't play 65 hertz or lower. Okay, or well, they play 65 and above. And you can set that all the way up to 500. And, well, that's what that is. And that's why I've got it on high pass. Then we've got your punch EQ, which is pretty much your bass boost. Again, as you can see in there, I've set it to about a quarter. And then we've got your gain. And this one's different. It doesn't have a voltage. It just has numbers. So this one you really got to do by ear. And by ear, uh, I've set it, I think it's about, two th about a third of the way up. It's pointing to the five. Okay, so it's probably a little more than the third, but it's definitely not at the 12 o'clock position because um, at the 12 o'clock position, it gets a lot louder, which is means that that's where it's putting out its power, but my speakers won't be able to handle the amount of power that amp puts out. And the exact same thing on the other side because it's a four channel. Okay, so you have two gains, you have two of everything. I've set them all the same, as close as I can get. And um, also I have it on four channel mode over here. So that's pretty much how you set your gains, okay? With your gains, do it by ear, get a song you know, okay? Um, if you've got, if you're doing a four channel amp, turn your subs off, okay? You know, just pull the RCA out if you don't want to connect your speaker, disconnect speakers. 
so you don't have to have the bass competing with it. Listen to it, turn it up, and when you hear it maybe distort, or when you hear it when it gets to a point where it sounds different all of a sudden, just back it off a little and keep it about there. Uh, that's, that's for your gain. Um, and for your low pass, that's easy. Just choose a frequency, think to yourself, what, what don't you like? As I said, for mine, I've set it at about 65 hertz, so the speakers don't go below that. And for here, I've set it at around 80, 90. Okay, so there is a bit where they do cross over each other. I think that clears about everything up on how to do it. It's not that hard. Um, but you can always read your manuals, but as dif different manuals have different things. That manual says to do it by ear, that manual says it to match, match it to your pre-out or whatever. So, 